welcome back to Boys on Film. My name is Phil. I'm once again joined by Sean Vickers, who's there. We are talking about a film that he's seen that I haven't, a documentary called The Lost Weekend, A Love Story. I'm presuming you know a bit about the Beatles and you're kind of familiar with John Lennon's work. Yeah, I've never heard of them. I've never heard of them. I know, well, obviously everyone's talking about them because of their final song. Oh, don't get me started on that. <laughs> So this is on the Icon Film channel. It's available from the 20th of November. It's then going to be available on DVD, Blu-ray and digital from the 18th of December. A story that, according to the press release, resonates deeply with anyone captivated by the magic of John Lennon and the complexities of human relationships. It explores the romantic relationship between John Lennon and his assistant turned lover, Mae Pang, who was 23-year-old, experiencing her first unforgettable love. Wow, what a person to to have that romantic connection with. I mean, it's quite the tangle web. I mean, the documentary follows, it's through the eyes of May, so May is, narrates this whole piece of work. It really talks about the end of the Beatles and the beginning of John and Yoko living in New York. Power, Flower power, it talks about the bedding, it talks about the creation of Imagine. And then it kind of drifts into um, a couple of things. One... Yoko's relationship with Julian, who was uh, John's son with Cynthia, his first wife, and also their relationship, which starts to drift apart. May comes into their life because she is an employee at Apple um, Records, and she becomes basically like their assistant. And over a period of time, they get very close. Yoko kind of clocks what's going on and says, "I think you should. I think you and John should have a thing." And it's kind of teed up by Yoko, which is like the rumor, the rumor in the like industry, right? And May, to some extent, corroborates this. And it follows not a lost weekend. The lost weekend is actually about two years in time, but tells their story about how they fall in love uh, and have a very parallel life to what was going on. But also, I think what's important is um, how, in some ways. Uh, May brings Julian back into John's life. And so Julian and John pre estranged. Yoko in no way helped that situation. And May Pang really helped to bring Julian back into John's life. And I think that's super interesting in this documentary. I find it incredible that this story has taken 50 years to tell. Why has it taken so long? Is it a legal thing? I don't know, actually. May Pang is fairly prolific and has spoken about this a lot on US network TV. I think if you're a fan of the Beatles and the ongoing legacy of um, the stars of the Beatles, you're pretty much aware of May Pang. So the story's uh, been told, it's just not been done in a documentary before. It's not been done in this documentary kind of style. Hey, listen, I thought it was okay. I thought it was pretty good. I have a couple of issues. Issues is the wrong word. Or maybe it's not. I have a couple of gripes, I guess. One, it's really long. And you know me and really long documentaries. Unnecessary unnecessary so i think it was a little bit treacly and the second thing is i find in these kind of situations when someone is you're living vicariously not through the individual but through a third party it, it feels it feels a bit odd so you know may's going then we went to a party and then this happened and then i might jump david bowie and then blah, 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 blah. and then you know he did something with elton john and i'm a bit like it's your perspective of john and i don't know it, it's it he gets a little one note at times because you're of course someone's telling the story but it is through the through the eyes of somebody else and a little bit like when we talked about Duran Duran recently I think it required a bit more rounding out and Julian is there for sure Julian talks a lot on this topic it needed a bit more rounding out for me but um I think it is super interesting if you don't know the story of May Pang and you don't know really what happened to John yeah. post the Beatles and his time in the US. You know, he really loved the US. He loved being in New York. He loved being in California. Um, and so that part of the story about how that plays out and who he is and who he became really um, after the Beatles, right up until the time he was shot. So it's chronological. It's interesting. It's, it is very much through the eyes of May. Uh, I'm not saying that it's in any way this creative license. It's it's true to how she sees it. But I think because of that, it lost me a little. And I think that's probably why it felt a little bit long for me because I, I, I need a bit more texture and I needed some additional voices in there to kind of not corroborate, but to enrich. And I didn't really get that. But that is views of my own. Well, it's good that you said that Julian Lennon has, you know, an input in this because I, I think 
there are so many situations where you get a document documentary like this that isn't necessarily official although it's a true story in their account it might not necessarily be in agreement with the family john lennon's family in this case but yeah it's interesting that julian does put his yeah. pennies worth in and i like the fact that you know one of the big things i took away was that uh, may pang and cynthia john's first wife are actually incredibly close and and they're both in, obviously may is incredibly close to julian and that really comes through in the documentary so i like that warmth i like that may may isn't just this lost weekend or i don't know 24 months in john's life actually she was critical to bringing Julian back into the fold and the idea of family. So I really love that idea of her lingering role rather than just being kind of the mistress for a period of time, like the impact that she had on the family unit. And I like that. Um, some of the other bits I could probably do a bit less without, um, but I did love how that played through. So it's called The Lost Weekend, A Love Story. It's premiering on the Icon Film Channel from the 20th of November. It's also going to be available on Blu-ray, DVD and digital download from December the 18th. Sean, always good to see you. Thank you very much for watching everyone at home. Drop a comment down below if you're interested in this documentary or you like the review. Give us a like if you do. We always like the likes. We like the likes. Like the likes. And do you want to know what I want to give it a rating, Phil? Or yes, please, yes. What's the uh, rating, Sean? I have to decide. Phil doesn't care, so I don't <laughs> It's a three star for me, Phil. Three is okay, right? Is for me. You're very, <laughs> you're a very picky marker. No, no picky, maybe not picky's the right not word. Picky's not the right word. Picky's not the right word. I just, I just score accordingly to the stars. <laughs> I was going to ask you if this was a bit name droppy because I think there is a tendency oh, yeah. if you've been in that oh. situation, you could be like, oh, you know, I met such and such, and I mean, we do it all the time, don't we? I was talking about Duran Duran in the last review video. Yeah, but I think I think that is also a thing. It's like it, there's a lot of clunky like and then insert very famous person at the time was there and we you know and then insert another famous person was there. And I that grates a little bit, I have yeah. to say. And it probably pads out the documentary as well unnecessarily. Like you say it's too long. It's full well, of all so that of course, nonsense. Of course John knew Alton John. Of course John knew Nile Rogers. Of course John knew like of course he's John Leonard, yeah. you know what I mean? So like this idea of like, and then we went to a party and you know, insert very famous person was there. I'm like, well, obvs. So yeah, and thank God we've got that really dreary new song. But I mean, if there's one reason that AI is gonna, you know, destroy humanity, it's that kind of dog shit that gets put out. Like, oh. this song <laughs> wouldn't exist. Don't this add Sean, would... no, do add Sean, yeah, please me, do it. Me. Like, <laughs> everyone's like, ooh, well, this song wouldn't exist if it weren't for AI. Well. Maybe in this instance, we should have put AI in the box and closed it. Because <laughs> what a dreary old pile of nonsense. Ooh, I'm not commenting. <laughs> Don't, I have. There you go. Nonsense. We, we need a full screen for your comment. Controversial. I'm just telling you, it is a dreary old pile of nonsense. It is an argument for why AI will ruin society. I, it, this did not need to be made. It is not a classic piece of work. It's a... It's an exercise in nonsense. So you can keep it. Learn nonsense. Send Sean an X or a tweet. I'm sticking with tweets at Sean Arella. I'm just going to get loads of the dads who look like Paul Weller going, it's the best thing I've ever heard. <laughs> and that's all right, dads who look like Paul Weller. I get it. I still think it's sh